it's me again. So I had my first custom order, which is a Taylor Swift inspired Speak Now light purple kind of top to wear to the concert. She was like, oh, can you just make something like this and add sleeves to it? I was like, hmm. So this is a fabric I got from Homecraft Textiles. I am such a fan of this. Like it is gorgeous. It's literally like almost similar to the fabric that I saw on the website. So I'm so happy about this. So basically this top is literally like that crop top with gathers on the right side. Yes, with a few gathers on the right side and then some more gathers on the left hand kind of underarm to the waist seam. The main problem for me, of course, has been trying to manipulate that pattern for the first time. I don't really f with knit patterns. It's, it is it is really scary for me. When you get so used to doing woven patterns and stuff, you really don't want to like just jump into knit for the first time. But like, it's just easy to remember for knit sewing, you always need to use a zigzag stitch, use the right kind of needle, use the right kind of thread, and especially use an overlocker if you have one or, you know, zigzag stitches along the seam. She also asked for bell sleeves, and bell sleeves are one of the sleeves that I have been collecting. I'm trying to make like the sleeve collection. So I can always make long sleeves out of basically anything. So I'm going to go ahead and link a few of the sleeve patterns that I've collected so far. They're all from Etsy and I've tested them. So they do work well with any sizing, like, you know, if you match up the size measurements and stuff. However, it really does depend on the armhole size to the sleeve that you're doing from two different patterns if you're mashing stuff together because you do, you will need to like, you know, ease and gather the armhole and the sleeve and all that stuff. So it's a, it's a bit, it's a bit like annoying. Anyway, let's go ahead and make this Taylor Swift inspired knit gathered crop with bell sleeves. I don't know, I don't know if that makes sense. Let's go ahead and make it. Can you move please? So unfortunately my pattern right now is the most comfiest spot in my entire house to lie down on. This is a pattern I've been manipulating to get some new gathers onto that knit fabric. It's been a real learning experience. I'm so sorry that this entire shot is literally my cat's bum, but Mr. Shed Han, can you please move? I don't sit on your things like that. I really don't want to disturb my cat. But um, this is the fabric, so it's really, really beautiful. Honestly, like I, I am in love with this fabric. Oh no! Okay, someone is. Oh, the feet stretch. Wait, this is literally a dream fabric to work with. So that's why I've been making my muslin. It's one of my samples I've been working on to sell for my label, and I really want to add a middle seam through here and at least like two or three bows. Anyway, the focus right now is this. So this is my, like the first version of the crop of the gathered top I've made. This is the worst fabric to show, but the gathering was really fun to do. It's just like literally some kind of like box pleats I did. And then over here, you can see that, oh, this is, this looks really bad. Can I please use my fabric that I need to make things with? I used a projector to cut out my patterns because I just got real tired of cutting out and gluing stuff and honestly my knees couldn't handle it either, it was just way too much. So here I'm just projecting the pattern onto the floor and using, you know, all my tools to redraw the pattern on top of my fabric so I can just cut it out much easier. I also want to transfer all my notches, all the relevant information onto the pattern. Cutting out the bell sleeve was honestly an experience. It was a lot more fabric than I actually expected but it turned out really good on the muslin as you can see. I was terrified of cutting this fabric because it was just slipping all around the place. So now I'm just cutting into the fabric. That's what the center front looked like and this is what it looked like when I manipulated the pattern for the asymmetrical gathering on the top and the side. This is the center back and then here is my shoulder part of the sleeve and then here is the really big bell sleeves. Cutting into this fabric was honestly a nightmare. It was slipping and slapping all around my table and my table is not so big. It's about half the width of the fabric. So it's really annoying to have to just keep, you know, folding that fabric over and then draping it over the edge of the table. It was just a mess. But I had to keep, as you can see, just keep flattening it out, using my clips, using my pins, and just slowly cutting everything out. I did something really dumb here. I wanted to extend the shoulder seam to have less of a boat neck. And I did that on the actual pattern, so I didn't even test this. It turned out great, but it was just don't, don't do what I did. And then I actually slashed the pattern more because I wanted more of the gathers in the front. So it was just, there's a lot going on while I was cutting this out. Now we switch to my beautiful nighttime sewing. So this is pretty much a sewing after work. The fabric was a little bit thin and see-through and stretched. I didn't want my client having to wear something under. So I doubled up on the fabric to create that lining. As you can see, I just sewed on top of it. So with the shoulder gathering, I'm not too good at mats, but um, I know that obviously if you want to gather, you have to have more of an area of the fabric to bring in. So it equates to the other side of the back seam. So when you connect them together, it, it equals. So I literally just copied the photo for my inspo and I wanted to know, you know how much to gather to get that same look because obviously when it's stretched out taut across the chest, it's going to look really nice. 
I'm pretty sure earlier I said I did box pleats around these. That was a mistake. These are actually just normal pleats. How you pleat these, like you literally just tuck in fabric beneath and make sure that's even and then stretch it kind of through the fabric so you kind of just get that overlap of a fabric. That's all a pleat is. It's just overlapped fabric. So I made sure to secure these with pins instead of clips because the pins will actually you know, go through two layers of fabric and just make sure those actually stay there. It's the exact same thing on that side. So I pinned where it would match on the centre back just to see the line up. Then I knew how much to gather because all that excess fabric was just laying there. So I literally just did the same thing as the shoulder. I just overlapped fabric, kind of made it even, kind of followed the photo and just just like, just like literally done it. I, just, I literally did it by eye. Next, I just pinned the front to the back, making sure the seams are matched up with the amount of gathering I had done and went straight to the sewing machine. So I'm using a special stretch needle, I'm using that stitch length on the machine and I'm using a zigzag stitch. So because the fabric was a little bit thicker because it is double lined and then also gathered, I had to go super slow over those and make sure those gathered showed not only through the seam allowance but through the rest of the fabric. And this is how it looks so far on my adjustable mannequin in a size 10. It was a little bit loose, but I just loved how the gathers were already looking. So once the shoulders and the side seams are connected, I went on to the sleeves. The sleeves was a bit, it wasn't hard, but it was a little bit confusing because you're so worried about messing up the fabric, messing up the pattern, you just take everything a little bit too literally. I almost messed up the sleeve by connecting the wrong part. I almost messed up the sleeve by connecting the shoulder part to the, where the bell sleeve would meet the elbow so thank god I didn't but it was a little bit scary. So this is what you do in a bell sleeve, you just tuck it through and you pull it out just like a normal sleeve to a shoulder seam but just two parts to a single sleeve. I used my overlocker to do a narrow hem for all the hemming. The sleeves had a different hem to the bottom of, of the shirt only because I didn't want a very thick hem so the sleeves would drape very beautifully and then for the bottom I just did a regular like 2 centimeter hem as you can see there. <laughs> I was honestly blown away by how this looked because it looked exactly like how I imagined it in my head and I was honestly so happy with it and so was my client and I, I just love the end result.